Hi, my name is Cody Hosterman, and I'm the Technical Director at Pure Storage for VMware Solutions. And I'm here with... My name is Anthony Ferrario. I'm the Product Manager here at Pure Storage for VMware Solutions. And one of those VMware Solutions that he PMs is for vRealize Orchestrator, right? Which happens to be the topic of this video. Okay. So let's start off with what is VRO? So vRealize Orchestrator is a very, very cool tool set that VMware has provided for you to help control and orchestrate your environment. Essentially, it combines a few things, understanding of objects, scripting, and workflows, which allow you to sort of tie things together and create additional capabilities inside of the VMware environment that wouldn't otherwise exist. So like I can see my VMs and my data stores and my virtual switches and that type of stuff inside of it. Well, not only that, right? You can see them, but then you can actually take actions based on what you see. So what's the benefit of that over just the regular old vSphere web client interface? Well, it's a typical scripting example, right? So, you know, you can do a lot of good capabilities within the, you know, within the web client interface. But say you wanted to, you know, do a given workflow against 100 VMs or 1,000. Or say you wanted to trigger it automatically, uh, you know, based on something you want to monitor or some sort of external environment condition, right? You can't have that all happen through a GUI that you have to click through. Yeah, it would take you 12 hours to click through 1,000 VMs, right? So you yeah. can do this with loops and, and, and logic and, and, and kind of customize it the way you want, essentially. Absolutely. Yeah, can, think about it you know, just like you would any other scripting thing, except this is custom with a bunch of additional power specifically for VMware environments. And the nice thing about it, too, right, is that it's not, like a, it's not just a bunch of scripts, right? It's a GUI-based tool, right? So you can create like, interfaces and wizards and drop-downs and so forth. So if you want someone to interact with your script, it's actually them just running through a GUI wizard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you can look at it as scripting. You can go down to the code level, but you can also deal with it at a much more user-friendly level. So where does Pure come in with this? Well, so basically, similarly to the uh, you know, web client where you might have a plugin, you know, in this case, we want to add knowledge about Pure objects and Pure capabilities into the VRO sort of toolkit to allow you to take you know, advantage of all the capabilities that we have. So like, just like, VRO can see my VMware environment, it can see my flash arrays, my data, my volumes, my snapshots, whatever happens to be on that flash array. Exactly. And, you know, given the fact that we at Pure have a pretty good understanding of what our, uh, our systems and devices are capable of, we're able to actually layer some of our intelligence on top of that and help you with pre-built actions and workflows. I guess one of the nice things about the flash array is that it has a built-in REST API. And so if you can use REST, you can then manage the array in really any way you want. And so that's essentially what VRO is doing with our plugin, right? Under the hood, yeah. But it still surfaces itself as the same objects, actions, and GUIs that you were describing earlier. So I can build workflows to, you know, configure my array, create a new data store, go to my VMware environment, find a data store, then resize it on my array. So I can do workflows that touches everything. You could, yeah. I mean, you know, a lot of times you won't have to because of the level of integration we have. We actually have workflow packages that help you do a bunch of that stuff. But if you do run into something that's not there, you know, you can compose these functions and put together a nice workflow to accomplish what you need. So the plugin comes with like default workflows that just do most of the things you're going to commonly want to do, right, on a day-to-day -day basis. But it also gives you the power to customize them if you want to, right? I don't want this option, or I want to always be this size, or I want to always use this naming convention. Yeah, none of it is locked down. It's all scriptable, it's all controllable, and we're just trying to sort of give you a core set of tools to work with. Because in the end, anything can be scripted, right? So you could create a workflow that, or take one of our workflows that creates a data store, but then also have it order a pizza or something like that if you really wanted to. I mean, you could. <laughs> it has an API. Yeah. So let's take a quick look at a demo of using vRealize Orchestrator and of course our plugin. Can we do it with VVols? Absolutely. Awesome. So what we're looking at here is, of course, the vSpinner web client. We have a bunch of virtual machines on a VVol data store. So we have a bunch of vVol based virtual machines. But currently, they don't have any special storage policy assigned to them. So we can assign a storage policy in here, but I want to assign it to five VMs. I don't want to click through all of them. And what we want to do with these particular virtual machines is I want them to be replicated. right? I want to replicate them once an hour, for instance. And here on my array, I have a replication schedule of once an hour. Right? So I want to assign those VMs to that. And so I can do this on mass inside of VRO with our plugin. First off, I want to create a storage policy based on a one hour replication policy. And so what I can actually do using vRealize Orchestrator is one of our workflows here takes in that protection policy on the flash array and creates a VMware storage policy based on that configuration. So I choose my vCenter I want to create it on. And then I choose the flash array protection group I want to import. 
and then I give it a name and any other custom variables I might want to do inside of this workflow. And that'll take that configuration, like the retention policy of that, uh, the replication interval, or whatever else happens to be in that particular flash array protection group, and create a corresponding VMware storage policy. And so that vRealize orchestrator workflow did that. And of course, you can do that in the vSphere plugin. There's a variety of other ways of doing it. And so the next thing we want to do is actually assign this policy to these particular VMs. If we take a look at the policy, you can see what I mean by what it's created. If we go at this policy and edit it, you can see that it has the one hour replication schedule, it has the retention policy, it even has the target array I want to replicate to. And of course, you can configure this pretty much however you want. Yeah, and it's the same thing you saw in the array, right? Yep, exactly. Quick way of importing it. And so back inside of vRealize Orchestrator, let's actually assign that policy to all those VMs at once. And so I'll, first I'll choose my vCenter I want to act upon. I'll choose however many VMs I want to change. And so I'll choose all five of those virtual machines. I want to replicate all those virtual machines and all the volumes on that array once an hour. And so I'll choose my five VMs. And then I'll choose a VMware storage policy. And I'll choose the VMware storage policy that I just created. And this will automatically figure out, OK, what VVOL data store can offer up an array that can conform to that policy? What protection group on an array conforms to that? Right? Well, it's the one I imported. It's the same thing. And so this workflow will move the VMs, if needed, to the proper array to conform to that policy. These are all on the right one. And then it'll assign that policy and put all those VMs in the pr proper protection group. And this is all done through the VMware API, right? These workflows are not talking directly to the flash array. They're talking to VMware, who's then doing the work to talk to the flash array. So if we refresh the vSphere web client, we can see that the VM has been reconfigured. And the policy has been assigned. The workflow has been completed. And we'll refresh here. And we'll see that the one hour replication storage policy has been assigned to my virtual machines. And you can see the volumes on the flash array are in that protection group. And so if someone to go manually to that array and remove them or so forth, VMware would know about it because it knows those VMs and their storage are supposed to be in that protection group and replicated once an hour. Right. So if I understand this correctly, right, you know, we've got these two workflows that you've run. Now say I wanted to do those together. Could I, could I go into VRO and, and, and combine those workflows? Yeah, that's, that's one of the great things about the plugin about VRO is that it's all changeable. It's all extensible. If you want to go in there and edit it and slightly tweak how the workflow works, you can do it. If you want to take two workflows that we offer and combine them, you can also do that. Right? There's a lot of extensibility. There's a lot of ability to change it if you want to. But the nice thing about it is there's so many workflows that we offer in our plugin and the workflow packages that you rarely should probably have to really do any custom work. But you have the opportunity to do it if you so choose. Yeah. So now that my VMs are replicated, how do, I, how do I manage them? What if I want to fail them over for either a planned migration scenario or if there's a disaster recovery, or if I just want to test to make sure the replication's working, what are my options around that? Good question. You have a few different options, actually. I mean, you could do it you know, manually. You could use Power CLI. But you know, one of the really cool ways we think to do it is actually to leverage VRO. We have some workflows that are capable of this, right? Yeah, I mean, VVOLs, inside of the replication API for VVOLs, there's uh, a test failover operation. And so we've written some workflows inside of vRealize Orchestrator using our plugin and VMware APIs to automate that and add some extra value onto it, right? Change the VM networks, power on the virtual machines, and so forth. And so in our VRO plugin, we have a workflow to do so. So let's take a look at a demonstration of running a VVOL test failover using vRealize Orchestrator. Sounds good. So we're back to our vSphere web client. GUI interface, and we see that we have our VMs that we configured earlier with a replication policy. You can see that they are indeed assigned to that replication policy, and they are in that one hour replication group as right. dictated by that policy. So now that they're replicated, let's, let's run a test failover and bring them up on our other vCenter and make sure that the replication's working and that those VMs can properly boot up. And so inside of our VRO plugin, we have a workflow that allows you to choose a vCenter, then choose a source flash array, like where do I want to fail over from? And then you can choose a replication group. VVOLS allows you to fail over all the virtual machines that are assigned to the same replication group if you want to. And this will bring them all up, because it's a consistency group as well. Right, right. I'll choose my remote flash array that I want to fail over to. And then VRO will intelligently decide which ones are actually available to fail over to for those VMs in that replication group. I'll choose some of my recovery information. Like what cluster, what resource pool, do I want to change the VM network when it brings up? 
VRO gives you the, the plugin that we offer inside of VRO and the workflow gives you the dynamic options to choose ones that are actually valid and correct for the previous selections that you've made. Makes sense. This is one of the benefits of having this kind of GUI driven workflow is that it can respond to your input dynamically and give you a nice kind of sandbox to work in to make sure you're not making any mistakes. And so the vRealize Orchestrator workflow package for vBalls that has this test failover workflow will kick off the test failover running the test failover API. It'll synchronize the data if you told it to. And then it'll bring up a copy of all those virtual machines in that consistency group on the other side. Right? And that whole process of taking that point in time, creating the new VM objects on the remote array, presenting them to the right host, seeing the virtual machine hardware descriptor file in VMware, that's all automated right, by this one API. It's very simple from a user standpoint. And so the vRealize Orchestrator workflow here is going to then update the, the vVol data store so the proper files or vVols are appearing inside of it. And then once that's complete, it will start registering those VMs and powering them on according to the configurations inside of that VRO workflow. And it looks like we're actually seeing an indication in the GUI here of VRO of where we are in the workflow, is that right? Exactly. The, by watching this, the, the logic and the different objects inside of this VRO workflow, you can see where it is, what's going on, what's the current variables, what's the log information. And those different objects, too, are some of the objects you can work with. Right? You can remove those actions, you can add them, you can reuse them, you can add little changes to them in scripting objects. Right? These are all custom internal objects that if you want to change how this behaves, you can do it by altering those, those objects. And so those virtual machines are now powering on. And as the virtual machines are powered on, we can go into them, log in. Does this look right? Is it the right point in time? Do I want to change the point in time? Should they boot up in a different order? Do I want to change the virtual network that they're using? You can verify that the configuration is appropriate. And then you can take your notes and go back and either change your inputs and rerun it or change the workflow if you want to. This is one of the nice benefits of using this over something like SRM is that SRM has a very strict kind of process it follows but you can't change certain things, right? right? VRO, you can change everything, which is a nice benefit around it. Yeah. And so now that I've confirmed it, I can use the same workflow to then clean up my environment, right? So it's gonna shut down those virtual machines, it's gonna remove them from the VMware inventory, and then it's going to reset the storage perspective, right? It's gonna remove those volumes and delete them, so it's gonna be the same way it was before the test. Pretty slick. And so this VRO workflow and all the other workflows we have in the plugin and some workflow packages are posted on the VMware Solutions Exchange, right? And they are supported by Pure Storage. And our VRO plugin, of course, is certified with VMware, so it appears on their compatibility guide. VRealize Orchestrator is extensible in a variety of different ways. And I don't just mean like you can create your different workflows, you can edit them, change them, but you can also use the product and run the workflows from a variety of different ways. Of course, you can use the interface that we saw there, but you can also use something like vRealize Automation. You can provide these workflows to end users as self-service items uh, through a catalog or so forth. You can use vCloud Director too, another VMware product, to run VRO workflows. VRO itself has its own REST API, so anything that can communicate with REST can also kick off VRO workflows if you want to. So there's a variety of ways of, of leveraging VRO and its yeah. workflows. You know, that's exactly why we like VRO so much and we see it providing so much value to customers. Really, it's just an extremely powerful, extensible toolkit that you can use from wherever you want and basically do whatever you want with it. And our job with the plugin is just to help you bring Pure into that environment in a seamless way. So if you want some more information around vRealize Orchestrator and our plugin, check the links that are provided alongside this video, or of course, go to purestorage.com. Thanks a lot, Anthony. Thanks, Cody.